all set. Hey guys, how is it going today? It's so cool. It's so cool to start getting feedback on the podcast episodes. We are a month in what started out as kind of an attempt for me to get back in the game and start rebuilding my Facebook audience has turned into something that I'm really excited about because it's growing and it's actually working a lot better than even I could have anticipated. I was just like, I need to be doing something to start speaking to people again. It'd been a few years since I had focused my energy on doing anything with Facebook Live. Uh, I had stopped doing Facebook Live videos, but I dove back in and then the repurposing of creating these, creating these Facebook Lives and then taking the audio and making that my podcast and uploading that on my YouTube to kind of put my eggs in multiple baskets. Well, it was the best thing I ever did and now I'm still really regretting being so lazy with my other Facebook account, being so lazy about content creation and taking for granted the fact that there's this whole other internet outside of Facebook. There's this whole other world of internet outside of Facebook that I had been neglecting because I was able to get clients easily on Facebook, like clients on demand kind of thing. So I'd explain that story if you haven't heard the episode where I tell my story about losing my other Facebook account. Um, go ahead, watch that episode or listen to that episode and hear my story. But honestly, if you're still putting all your eggs in the basket of Facebook, then today is a good day to open your mind. We're going to talk about, you know, Google. Um, so I want to open your mind and talk about the other part of the internet outside of Facebook. Uh, is everybody is everybody hearing me okay? Seeing me okay? For those who are watching live, hello. How's it going? I'm just gonna adjust things. Oh dear. All right, so I'm just gonna hold it for now. Are we are we crooked? Because you guys are coming up. Your comments are coming up sideways. Anyways, Eddie says yes. All right, so you can hear me okay. For the three of you watching live, hello. My name is Brandy Peters. For the first time you've ever watched me, say hello. Um, it's nice to meet you. It's cool when people watch live. It's cool and feel free to drop comments while you're watching live and if it goes a little bit off topic, it's good to have that engagement. Uh, but we're gonna talk about Google today and the role that Google plays in your digital marketing. So as I started out, I said that, you know, I'd gotten really lazy for a long time about doing anything other than content for Facebook. With my other Facebook account, I was in a position where if I put up that I had spots open to work with me, generally I would get the inquiries that I needed because there was enough people in my immediate Facebook network that knew of my work um, and knew what I did that it was actually really easy for me to get people who wanted to work with me. I have clients on demand basically, but when Facebook locked me out of that Facebook profile, um, so my other Facebook profile, the one that I was talking about, I had to start all over and start networking again on Facebook. Now, the way I had initially built my audience on social media had been a strategy that included a blog. So originally what I had was a blog telling my story about working from home, um, building my online business, my first online business as a content writer. I had used a blog strategy. Interestingly enough, what I did for a living at that time was write content. So I did like SEO content writing, so SEO blogging. Uh, so what I would do, I worked for a company in California who specialized in visibility strategies for businesses in competitive markets, and I would write articles, um, landing pages, sales pages, email automations, and their SEO blog articles for those websites that would go up monthly. Now, this was, I guess, 2012 till 2016 primarily, and at that time, you could actually do really well with SEO if you included like very specific keyword search terms based on what was trending in your area. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how that's changed because it has changed, but it's still very relevant. And it's also a missed opportunity for a lot of people like myself who have now gone all in on Facebook. Facebook has been the, the sexy place for them. Um, the place where you know you go and you put your ads up and you put your ads on your funnel and it has a lot of instant gratification to it. Whereas Google is more like a slow grind. And that is, one of the main things that keeps people away from focusing on their SEO, focusing on their search engine traffic, is because it's not fun and you don't get any immediate results. It's you're laying a foundation. So it's kind of like laying a foundation to over time get steady traffic flow onto your website. And if your website is optimized to capture leads, that's how you use SEO 
to generate leads for your business, but it doesn't happen immediately. It's not like with Facebook where you're like, hey guys, check out my new freebie and a bunch of people hop on and they opt in and then your list grows 100 people immediately that day. Um, It doesn't happen that way with SEO. With SEO, it's about hitting the right keywords and making your content visible online so that people who are searching for keywords that relate to what you do or sell can find you. And if you lay that foundation over a year, over two years, over three years, up up to like decades, then you're going to have some really good SEO real estate in the world of Google. But a lot of things have changed from what I was doing SEO article writing. So before I talked about this, I wanted to make sure that I was giving up to date and relevant information. And a lot of things have changed when it comes to Google. So one of the biggest things that you need to know about, like at the very basic, bare bone, basic kind of level, is that when it comes to Google now, people are getting custom, custom search results. So that means that they're getting search results that are relevant to them, similar to how it is on Facebook. So no longer if I search a keyword term and you search a keyword term, we're going to pull up the same identical results. Instead, Google is going to pay attention to our behaviors and to our actions online. And then it's going to choose kind of like what's the best thing to show us when we're most likely to click on. So that's the biggest change in Google search engine you know, kind of optimization is that not everybody's getting the same results. So it's usually most, it affects people most with like location-based businesses because obviously like if I'm like trying to get the SEO for Calgary, um, Alberta, like over in my general area, I'm going to optimize my website for that, include keywords in that. But people who don't live in Calgary and they search for things related to marketing are definitely not going to find my stuff if I focus all my energy on kind of a geo-targeting strategy. The other thing that's gonna come up with that is if people have frequently searched other topics relating to what you do or sell, because it's custom curated to them and based on their typical search behavior. So they're gonna get shown the websites that they've frequently visited before. They're also gonna be shown the most popular websites in their area and the most popular websites with people similar profiles to them have chosen. So um, the SEO is now very specific to the user I could get into that. It's not, like I said, it's not super sexy. It's not super exciting, but it's important to at least have a basic understanding of. So how do we use SEO? So Eddie here, she asked how to use keywords. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about keyword um, and keyword research. I really want to like direct your attention to this cool tool called um, Google Google Trends. Okay, it's called Google Trends. Anybody can access it. In the past, you know, you kind of had to be savvy in order to find the Google keyword search tool, which is still in your Google Ads Manager. Um, But now there's a thing called Google Trends. And just by putting in search inquiries on Google Trends, you can see live view of the most trending topics and what people are searching in your local area and what the popular keywords are. Google Trends is super important when it comes to marketing because you can plan your campaigns around what's trending, what's going viral. You can look at, you know, your niche. So you can look at keywords relating to your niche and see what other relevant keywords are there. But say you're going to produce content. So you're going to start a podcast, you're going to do a YouTube channel, you're going to do a blog. You could plan your content using the Google Keyword Planner. Okay, so Google Keyword Planner paired with your Google Trends. So let me explain how that looks. It's really hard without me doing it like a demo right now, which I definitely should do. I should put together a little mini workshop so we can get a video where I screen share this to you. But I'll use an example. I'm working on a Facebook page and a Shopify store that sells alien topic stuff. So aliens were trending. That's where I landed on the decision. I was going to do a demonstration Facebook group grow for another training I was working on. So I was like, let's pick something that's training, that is trending, not training, trending so that it's going to get, you know, a lot of hits and it's going to be easy to get a low cost per ad because it's trending, which is a topic for another day. But anyway, so I started this alien Shopify store that I'll start putting blogs on. I actually was thinking maybe more of doing like a podcast similar to this on topics related to paranormal and alien stuff in order to sell alien merchandise. Now I'm just using this as an example. I'm not saying you all need to go start alien stories. Think of this as an example. Now when I go into Google Trends and I look up aliens, it's going to tell me the exact keywords people are searching relating to aliens uh, that people are 
currently looking up. So the exact search terms they're using on Google Trends. And then when I go into my keyword planner, I can then select those as the keywords for my Google Ads. But that's not where it ends. Now, Google Ads is a paid strategy, so it's more similar to Facebook Ads. That's one way that you can use those two together. But say you wanted to not do Google Ads because you don't have the budget for it, this is where the SEO comes in. Now, if you want to make sure that you're hitting on trending topics, you use your trending Google trending search results, and then you start creating content using those trending search term results as the topics of your content that's relevant to what you do or sell. Obviously, you want to get specific about it, but this is how you start to discover what people are searching in your niche. This is how you start to find those keywords. This is how you figure out what you need to be talking about on your podcast, in your blog, on social media. You use the trending tool to figure that out and then you pair the trending tool with your Google ads to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. Now, like I said, without having a screen share in front of me to show this to you and show you how you can do this, it's, it's kind of just more, I'm explaining it, I'm putting it out there, I'm reminding you that it's possible. I think the purpose of this episode today, as we wrap up here near the end, hello to the people who are still watching live. Obviously this was an enticing topic, a bunch of you guys are hopping in. Give me a high five. If, if you didn't know about Google Trends, if you didn't know that you could use Google Trends, look it up right now, to find these keywords, give me a little like wave um, so I know that you're hearing me and that this is exciting information for you because you use that to plan your content, to set yourself up for success. You don't wanna just be picking your topics at random and deciding you know, on a whim what your content's gonna be. If you really wanna be strategic and understand your niche and make sure that you're producing content that's relevant to what your audience is searching, use the Google Trends tool. I've said it multiple times now, use the Google Trends tool. You can pair it with your Google AdWords for faster results, but make sure that you use that Google Trends tool. Um, and he says, sort of knew you'd clarify this more. <laughs> awesome, I'm so glad that I offered some clarity for you on this. Um, I'm so excited that you guys, oh, you're loving it. All right, so this is good. So Google Trends, use Google Trends, search terms that are relevant to your business and look at what's trending. You can see what's trending today. You can see what's been trending over the last year. You can see the specific keyword arrangements that they're set up for. If you haven't decided what your business is going to specialize in or what your niche is gonna be, or if you're setting up an e-commerce store or starting something new, you can use Google Trends to decide what you're going to sell. Like I said, I picked Aliens for my demonstration because Aliens with Area 51 and stuff has been trending so hard. And I know I could create some clever alien memes. I knew there was like, you know, potential for creating great content around it. I knew that there were a lot of sub niches and, you know, fodder for content ideas out there. It's just on point, it's relevant. It would be easy for a demonstration for a new store. So a new Shopify store that I built to attach to it that's gonna sell alien goods, but also for my Facebook, because it does come into Facebook. I mean, I, I could talk about this and maybe we'll talk about this all this week is Google Trends is also relevant to Facebook because people are searching and what's trending um, is gonna help you not just out in the world of Google, but also on Facebook. You can look up what's popular online and then assume that if it's popular online, it's viral on Facebook, it's viral on Twitter and Instagram as well, because those are part of the greater web. Um, so you can use this tr Google Trends tool to really figure out what your content strategy could be and really kind of make a content strategy, make yourself a content plan, really hack it, I guess, is what I wanna say. You could really hack this um, to increase your long-term success by choosing the right keywords, choosing the right keyword phrases, making sure that you're paying attention to this because it's going to make a difference in the long term. So here, as we wrap up at the end, I just wanna add that the reason why people don't talk about Google as much as they talk about Facebook ads or social media marketing uh, is because it's not gonna give you instant gratification. It's not gonna give you those immediate results. I've mentioned that a few times. With my strategy right now, I'm choosing the topics I'm gonna talk about carefully and I'm laying the foundation in my blog to have blog posts that are these podcast episodes and the YouTube videos and in-depth descriptions of each video with keywords. And I know that it's a love labor of love. It's, it's a love labor. It's, it's a project because I know that 
because in the past SEO did did treat me very well. I know that if I'm consistent with this, if I make sure that I am choosing keywords carefully, it will drive traffic to my website. So Eddie asked, why does it take more time? Well, the reason that it takes more time is because of the Google algorithm and the Google crawlers. So the reason why it takes more time for SEO to be established is there is kind of like um, SEO real estate on keywords. So if you just started today or just like I just started, you know, creating this alien Shopify store, if I just start blogging on there today and I use a good keyword strategy with trending topics relating to aliens, although I'm laying the foundation, somebody else probably has an alien blog, um, a paranormal blog that's been there longer. They've also structured their SEO to backlink to older content or content with more credibility. Now, the way that SEO kind of works is if you have backlinks to your content, referencing it as a reliable source, that's going to increase the ranking of that content. So the reason why it takes longer is because say you wrote a really great blog post, you need time for, first of all, like the social media links are gonna help, but also other websites might backlink or reference that website and that's gonna increase its, its status and ranking. And some keywords are just so difficult to rank on because somebody has really held that real estate. They are referenced everywhere by other articles and other blogs. So there's a lot of traffic coming to it. So it's kind of considered the authority. So it's all about authority, but you can still lay this foundation to get these keywords. It's just understanding that if you're going into competitive niche, just because you wrote a blog with these keywords doesn't mean that somebody who wrote a blog two years ago doesn't get ranked above you. So Victoria says, so how long, give or take, does it take to increase ranking? Well, it depends on the competition of the keywords and whether or not you've chosen phrasing and stuff that's competitive or non-competitive. So it's going to depend on your niche. It's going to depend on a lot of, it's going to depend on a lot of different things. However, it's about laying like a foundation for search results. So you can increase, you can increase your chances of this working for you by also making sure that you're guest blogging and referencing your own website and stuff. You want to get as many backlinks to that content as possible. That's very important to get other people referencing your blog and to get links referencing your blog um, and driving traffic to it. Using Pinterest, using social media to drive traffic to it because if you put a post up and it gets a lot of traffic right off the bat, so you could also use an ad strategy to drive traffic to it. If it gets a lot of traffic right off the bat, then that is going to help increase the rate but it comes down to competitiveness of the keywords. It comes down to have you done your research? Is it stuff people are actually searching? And it's also kind of having patience because although like in the past it used to be like, oh, in six months, like usually SEO, you could make SEO promises of about six months. Um, and that was when I started in like 2012. Um, we can increase this. Typically now the crawlers are resorting like the keyword rankings like on a daily basis because of the new algorithm. But there is still, like I said, there's still like kind of a grandfather thing. There's still definitely like people who have a concrete hold on certain keyword SEO. But if you do SEO better, so you provide higher value, you provide better content and your content gets more traffic, then you can bump them out of the ranking. You can rank above them by getting traffic to that post. Wow, right? Right? Okay, so I know this gets a lot of... Like it gets a lot more complicated when you start to get into kind of the specifics of the strategy. Today, I just wanted to introduce this idea to you guys. I don't want to overwhelm anybody. So I just want to go back to today's big takeaway, which is Google Trends. Search in Google Trends keywords relevant to your business and start playing around and start looking and then start thinking about possibilities for your content strategy, knowing that doing this is going to help you lay a foundation for long-term success. This is going to allow you to get daily traffic hits on your website that you don't pay for. Facebook ads, again, you're going to pay for them every day. And yes, said it can be really fun to have that instant gratification of engagements and people hitting your website daily, but it's expensive. And it also, like when the Facebook ads go away, that traffic goes away. Whereas SEO has long-term value. SEO gets you regular traffic to your website. If you pair it with good social media engagement, a good content repurposing cycle, lots of backlinks. Over time, you're going to get traffic to your website that you don't pay for that is based on people searching for things relevant. So that's why you're producing content to begin with. That's where, okay, I'm gonna plug it here at the end. If you want to do something similar to what I'm doing where you create Facebook Live videos like this, write a description for those Facebook Live videos, put them on to your podcast, so your Apple iTunes as well as anywhere else podcasts are played, 
and upload them to YouTube, then I have a training for that. So if you want to kind of get your head out of Facebook for a little while, you could use Facebook like I am as your main place where you produce content, but then you could also kind of lay these foundations by turning your Facebook lives into repurposed content and posting them onto your website with a blog with links to your iTunes podcast and your YouTube channel. So it's a five click repurposing strategy. It's really easy to do. And if you're interested in that, it's on sale for $55. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link here, but thank you guys for watching. This was exciting. A lot of comments, a lot of questions. I will get to your questions here. When I get off, I will just write you an answer. Thank you guys so much. I'm Brandy Peters. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to the audio version, please give this five stars. Like we could really use some, you know, reviews on Apple iTunes. So if you could help me out with that, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and leave me a comment. Thank you so much for your guys' time today. Remember, Google Trends. Google Trends, go look it up right now. You're gonna have so much fun finding content keywords, content keywords that you can use to plan your content, whether it be blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, whatever your poison is. Make sure you're doing something outside of Facebook. Don't end up like me where you end up rebuilding. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.